so today begins the fetch quest for it's like some bed MacGuffin thing that we need to get that hasn't been explained to us yet but I I kind of looked into it a little bit I don't know how long this section is gonna take I'm hoping that it's doable in a single stream even if that stream is a little bit on the longer side so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of willing to go long if it means getting this segment done so we can hopefully wrap this up by the end of the week. Because if, if I have to... Like, I'm enjoying the game fine, but if I had to do another week of this after this one, I am going to start to lose it a little bit. It's not easy to call him forth. I was here as a youth, I had no idea where to begin. So where, so where do we begin? With the Z-Keeper in the real world, I'm afraid that I do not recall how to summon him. That's conveniently terrible. Oh yeah! Nice. This area is nice and moody. Oh, I don't have the, um, controls set to the thing that I need them set to. There we go. Um, what the fuck? Okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. I fixed it. There we go. Cool. Yeah, so I, I started playing the Superstar Saga remake, the, the 3DS version. So it was set to those controls by mistake. I'll just kind of keep chipping away at that on my own time, slowly. It's nice because I already played through the GBA version on stream, so I don't really need to pay attention super closely. I'm more so just interested to see what might be changed or updated or improved. And I have to say that so far I'm, I'm actually enjoying it more than I expected to. I do miss some of the things about the GBA art style though. Like the way the Koopas look. They don't have like, in the 3DS version they don't have their, um, you know, like Amelia Earhart flight caps or whatever they're called. And then, like, the giant Koopas aren't fat. They're just big Koopas, straight up. So that's, like, a little... It's a really minor thing, but it is something that... Oh, I see. Well, I fucked it up again, but... It's kind of a cool enemy, though. Kind of neat. On Fort. Damn, that was a lot. Oh, lit, they just turn into regular blocks? That's fun. Yeah, enemy variety's been pretty pretty damn good. Why do I keep- why did I think that it was a regular block when clearly it was not? Like I was just fighting these guys. Ten is really heinously bad. But I guess their defense lowers as you hit them. 
What? Can you get anything better than just a coin, though? Guess not. I might just run since I got the uh the jump on him literally. Something new. Oh shit. We got rectangles, triangles, and circles now. Hey, yo, that's lit. Hey, yo, Riley, what's up? The squash and stretch is real. <laughs> On the animations. I can't L again? That's a little annoying, but I... It's not a big deal, I guess. Don't I just switch to, uh, to the rectangle? Or are we going to be able to jump with this? Oh, interesting. But I'm also like, why not... I mean, I'm sure there's going to be areas where we can't just turn into the the uh, tower and super jump, but it's like kind of cool that you can do that in this form, I guess. The hook shot. Oh, I see. So we can get this 50 up here. Oh. Not as... Not as much momentum as I was hoping for. Okay. Oh, that activate. Okay. So we got like one more, one more uh, puzzle to figure out. What's a baconator? I'm 
I'm assuming the ball is the key, probably. I should also, I should heal up a little bit. I'm a little low, right? Yeah. In fact, we'll just use that again, because regular mushrooms are not going to be useful in battle at all. Also, I guess they learned their lesson, Alpha Dream did at least, uh, when making the Superstar Saga remake, because you can toggle the map on the bottom screen, but you can leave it up while you're moving, as opposed to this game where, like, it always fades back, which, I mean, like, I get it to, like, have Luigi be accessible, but, like, at the same time, it's like, I'll, I'll just swap back if I really need to. It's a little odd. Hmm. I'm actually down to fight these guys because I'm pretty close to a level up. So I figure we might as well push towards that. Nice. That's pretty fun, actually. It's like satisfying. It's it's not particularly difficult, but it's like you hit hitting that hitting the block as it passes by is pretty satisfying. I gotta say. And yeah, we're close to a level up. What level would that be? Nineteen. I wonder if we get another rank up at twenty, or if it's like twenty-five or something. Okay, so there's some way... There's some way to solve this puzzle. It's like the Lost Woods, kind of. In a... Well, I guess even the, the original Zelda. But I was gonna say Ocarina of Time, but yeah. It is a thing in the original Zelda. In, in the same way as OOT. Where it's like random... Not random, but it's like, you know... You have to go the right way in an ever-cycling room. Uh, we... We're balling. Pretty sure there's a hookshot point over here, probably. That's kind of cool. That was, like, totally not worth it. What's up, Space Cowboy? Like, went through all that trouble just for a few coins. Kind of lame. I don't know why I can't cycle backwards. Hmm. 
I don't know if there's a way up there or not. I don't care though, because there are no attack pieces here. So I don't really care about missing question blocks. We're gonna leave Luigi because. Oh, I can't do that, damn it. Now, I can't fit under here to, uh... Yeah, I know it wants me to do this. I just wanted to see if it was possible. It's not. <laughs> just like spazzing out. Um. I don't know what the deal is with this. Because I can't fit underneath. I'm wondering. Like, if I swing immediately, does do these break or something, or...? Or can I grapple into...? Yeah, I can't grapple again. What in the hell does it want me to do here? Hmm. It's probably something stupid obvious that I'm overlooking. Has to be, right? Um, wait, can I get on top of here? No. Hmm. They do it if they do a tutorial about what I can do to break these, I'm gonna be a little annoyed. I fucking knew it. I fucking knew it. I was like, there has to be something I'm missing. Some kind of dash thing with the A with the A button or something. Oh shit. Yo, that's kinda sick though. I'm not even mad about the uh I'm not even mad about the tutorial now, but I knew there was something. I just don't like how there's no jump. I mean, I know they want you to just go in, into this form to do that, but...
Can't imagine there's anything else to do here. Now the real question is, can I do the the hammer? Can I do the hammer while? Wait, so I wonder, did they not expect the players to like try to grapple this from the other side before breaking the blocks? Because that's kind of what it seems like to me. Like, you were supposed to break those blocks to then be able to grapple, but you can grapple it from... lower. Seems like a QA oversight, but whatever. I always think the combination of, like, ancient civilizations with te with technology is cool. So you have this kind of, like, old artifact-looking bird with kind of, like, strips of data is what it looks like passing through. That aesthetic is always super sick. See, uh, The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. Even Persona 5 has a has a palace that is kind of like that. It's neat. All those who seek the Z Keeper's power, ulti bed, fetch quest. The pajama to rock frame. Dozing mattress and dozing sands. Mushroom tree board. Driftwood shore, and then it's gonna is it gonna be Somnom Woods? Oh no, okay, so we go there after then. or what? This pamphlet. This pamphlet holds all the information I just translated. The ancient pamphlet. Okay. I'm assuming it's pretty clear where I need to go, because it's probably parts of these locations that I haven't been to. In all likelihood. But I'm sure it's not going to be that easy. I'm sure there's going to be some kind of sub sub quest for uh, each of these locations. Which is fine, I mean... I mean, it's... It, it, I'm not, like, thrilled about it, but it's fine. What the? That was a very big fish. It's not a fish, dog. This is like a JRPG staple of like some kind of rare enemy that gives you a shit ton of loot or EXP or whatever. Be it the Metal Slime, you know, Golden Hands in Persona. There's similar stuff in SMT as well, but or at least Digital Devil Saga had a few encounters like that.
I'm just surprised they waited this long, like this far into the game to introduce something like that. It's cool. It like does it does help keep things a little bit fresh, but I feel like when it comes to encounters, you want as much variety up front as possible. And enemy variety has been pretty good. I'm just I'm thinking out loud where it's like if you have these rare enemies that give you a lot of EXP or money or whatever, it's like, wouldn't you want that to be accessible as as early as possible? Do have to do these in order? I mean, I guess I might as well just follow the order they suggest. How do I get out of here, though? Oh my god, they move so slow, man. Is L not mapped or something, or am I... Hold up, wait a second, if I... You can't... You can't L button from jump. Like, you can L button between these. And, like, it'll cycle around infinitely with R, but you can't... That's weird. There's no way that's faster. Especially because you can't do it upstairs, damn. So we need to go to Pajama Ja. Or Pajamaja. I don't know. I, don't, I literally have no idea how they want it to be pronounced. Who gives a shit? Take a fast travel point, probably to. the top, maybe? Let's go to the let's go to the base so I can look at the map. Or just okay. Okay, I'm sure this is what we're probably supposed to do. I'm sure this is probably what we're supposed to do. Nothing but confidence. It's gotta be, right? Yeah, because this area... That room is unexplored. Everything else should be, because I got all the attack pieces. So that indicates being pretty... thorough. So just go straight up a few screens. Not too bad. I don't know. How, I don't fucking know how this song goes. I was like ready to do the bum ba da dum ba da 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 dum ba, and then it stopped. Yeah, I am. The further we get into this, the more I'm like. Maybe it would be smart for me to take a break. Like, stream something else. Uh, before Paper Jam. Because, like, part of me wants to press through. Because from, from what I looked up on how long to beat, Paper Jam is about equivalent to Bowser's, as far as length is concerned. So, like, Bowser's took me around 24 hours to complete, and... How long to beat had it marked at like 25 or something, so that's it's pretty com pretty accurate, pretty comparable. And I think Paper Jam was around the same timing. 
So I assume that's that's pretty accurate, at least for how I play these games. Then again, if I do absolutely no side content, since I did a good good amount of it in Bowser's, maybe it'd be a little shorter, but probably it, it'd probably be like around that eight stream threshold, you know? Which means like almost three weeks. Unless I really press forward and like try to get it done faster, but I feel like I'd be more nervous about burning out that way than uh, just playing it stretched out over a longer period of time. But I, if it is going to be like eight parts for Paper Jam or so, then I probably do want to take a break between this and that. Because I'm hoping to finish this up and wrap this up in nine parts. But if that doesn't happen, I mean, it's not a huge deal. It's just... It's like, no matter what game it is... If I've been playing it for, like... A month... Which I guess it would be close to if I did 12 parts, right? Because that's four weeks. Uh, or like if I stream this for another week after this week. It's like once I'm, once I'm at that month mark, I'm like, okay, it's time to wrap it up. No matter how short or long the sessions are, I'm like, if I'm, if I'm with the same game for more than a month, that means either something's wrong with my approach to playing it or the game is just longer than it needs to be. Which is why I think by the time I finished Persona 3 Reload, I was kind of like personaed out at that point. I was kind of like, uh, I spent too long in Tartarus in P3 Reload because it was mostly for completion's sake. Like I was trying to fill out the compend compendium as much as possible and beat the Reaper for the achievement and whatnot. And I ended up being extremely overleveled because of that, but at least I know on a replay I can more or less just do the bare minimum of Tartarus exploration and be fine, which would shorten the game's length not an insignificant amount. Because the way because the way P3 goes, it's like in the in the late game, you're spending like an entire session in Tartarus if you're trying to get like get the most out of your out of each session. But then again, you can kind of infinite Tartarus anyway, because you can, like, heal yourself with Twilight Fragments and shit, but... It's one of those things where... It's just shitty, because Tartarus is so inherent and, like, built into p 3 story that it can't really be formatted differently. But it is, unfortunately, one of those things that the player kind of has to pace for themselves, as opposed to the game doing it for them. And I guess that's where the fatigue system from the PS2 version does come into play, where your party members will get tired after a while and not be able to be taken up into Tartarus for that session. And like in in Reload, it's like, okay, if they run out of SP, then you could use that as like an indicator of, okay, let's swap this person out for someone else. But because you can heal yourself pretty easily, it's one of those things where you kind of have to put some sort of limitations on yourself or just know when you are fine for story bosses and shit. But that's more that's really just more so for the first play. Assuming that's a game that you want to replay, so I mean, I don't know. It's worth playing for the story and characters alone. And the combat's really good, but it's just Tartarus is a grind. Or, well, it can be a grind, again, if you don't, if you overdo it. And it's so easy to overdo it. So another set of techniques, or what? 
three times. Okay, so it's just one more action. Can I not roll around like this, though? They should have made one input just like a regular roll on the ground. And then the other one be the bounce, but whatever. How far? Definitely halfway. I mean, I'm like 22 hours in or something like that. And this game is supposed to be really long. Like, l literally supposed to be 40 hours or something. And so I'm, I'm hoping that it doesn't actually take me another 20 hours to beat this. But I think it's like... We've got this little, like, MacGuffin hunt. I know it wants me to use the ball, but I don't... We get this little, like, MacGuffin fetch quest thing, go back to each of the areas a little bit. And then... I hate this. There's too many commands. Um... And then there's, like, one more area, and then the final area, I think? At least I would assume so. But each location, well not each location, but some of these locations have taken me two streams to get through because it's like, you do the real world segment, and that's like a few hours, and then you do the dream world segment, which is a few hours. I wonder what... I wonder why they felt the need to pad this game out, though. Because the first few arcs seemed fine, and then you get to the beach, and then it's like, just a lot. Well, and I guess you could say that the the mountain arc was also pretty long, because you had that big... I had that big Dream World segment of, like, finding Big Massive and fighting those special bosses or whatever, and then climbing the mountain after that for a few hours. I don't know, we'll see when it's all said and done. I... I feel like, uh... I mean, I'm already kind of of the opinion that this game is too long. Because at this point, Bowser's took me 24 hours. So, like... This would be the finale, in that case. More or less. I did it in eight streams, but there were a couple streams for this game that I did that were on the longer side, so that is why we're only on 7 right now, but... It's kind of fun that the virus guys are up here because it's cold. And so it's like the flu, you know? Kind of fun. I have a feeling this is going to be a longer fetch quest than I anticipate, because this is one of five. One of five, and if this takes me, like... Let me think. So if this takes me, like, 30 minutes... If it takes me 30 minutes per piece... Then that's, what, two and a half hours? That's if... It takes me only, uh... Only 30 minutes for each of these. If it's less, then great. Or if some of them are less and some of them are more, that's fine. But if, like, all these segments are an hour or something, I don't... I don't know if I can take much more. It's fun, though. Like, that that's the thing. It's like, this game is fun. And so it, you would think more of it... This is the problem when it comes to game length. It's like... I can't believe we're still having this conversation. Because I thought we learned our lessons back in, like, the PS2 days about games not needing to be too long. Because that's when JRPGs in particular got extremely long. Like, PS1 RPGs, from what I understand, having played FF7, 8, and 9, like, 40 hours max. I mean, more if you do all of the sh all the side content and stuff, for sure. But if you're, like, more or less just doing the main story, maybe some side stuff, it's like 40 hours cap. 
And I guess Dragon Quest VII is an exception, because I know that game's hella long. And that was on PS1, but... Yeah, I don't know. I guess I don't have, like, a... I haven't played that many PS1 and PS2 RPGs, so I can't really... speak to it too much, but just from what I have observed, at the very least, and from what I've played as well... But of course, like nowadays, and even with <laughs> for the past like 10, 15 years, everything needing to be an open world, every game quote unquote needing to be an open world, every game quote unquote needing to be 100 hours to get your money's worth. And it's like, man, this game's, this game was like, what, 40 bucks when it came out? And it's 40 hours, so it's like, oh, a dollar an hour. But it's like, I don't know, man, I... I'd rather the game be a little bit shorter, even if it was the same price. That's the thing. It very much is a quantity versus quality thing, and I think that gets lost in the weeds when we when this topic gets brought up on the internet a lot of the time. Because this game being as long as it is, and as padded out as it is, as much as I like certain aspects of it quite a bit, it's going to be hard to sell me on a replay just because it doesn't earn its length. Whereas, you know, Superstar Saga and Partners in Time are like 15 hours, maybe 20 tops if you do like everything, probably. Maybe, maybe longer, I don't know how much side content there is, but... Can't imagine it would take that long. And then Bowser's like 20, 25 ish. Pretty solid. I'd say that it, it earns that any longer, and I feel like I'd be a little annoyed, but you know. And I would even say that Superstar Saga and Partners are maybe maybe a little on the short side. They they don't feel like they're lacking. Maybe maybe partners feels like it could have at least another arc or two in there, maybe. Bump it up to like 20 or something like that, but. Can I spin across this? Nice. Yeah, <laughs> and like if Paper Jam. If Paper Jam was like this long, I don't know if I'd be able to do it, <laughs> like, actually. And, like, I know I committed to doing all five of these. So it's fine. Oh, what the f... Am I, what, was I supposed to just, like, sit there, or what? Oh, I see. Unbelie uh, uh, what do you say? Unbeefable? Oh shit. That's lit. Sling Sniper. Slide and hold the circle pad down to draw back. Hold B button and aim. Tilt to line- oh man. Hold the circle pad down, hold B button to aim. I feel like that's, uh... Yeah, anything with tilt is gonna be a little questionable with this setup. I really wish I could map it at the triggers, because then that would be perfect. There might be a way to do it through Steam, but I feel like it'd be pretty complicated. And I don't know that it's super worth it. So we got two more Luigi-nary attacks. This is a good way to pace our progress, I guess. We got one more bro attack for Luigi, two more for Mario. Well, three, because we'll, we'll get these when I uh, go back, now that we have the bounce. But yeah. I'm at least glad that once I finish 
this game in Paper Jam, I'll be able to, like, have all five of these in, under my belt. As far as knowledge is concerned, at least. Like, even if I never play Dream Team again, which is kind of sad, because there's so much that I like about this game. But even if I, even if I don't play it again... Well, you know what? A remaster of this game with the tweaked control scheme stuff that I was talking about last time, if if they took advantage of that and, like, cut back on a lot of the tedium and whatever, I mean, it's kind of hard to do that, I guess, unless you... Maybe even just speeding up their movement speed would be enough? I don't know. Like, having a run button? Maybe? Like, a sprint button? I mean, that'd be something. Unlocking fast travel earlier, maybe? I'm just trying to think, because... I don't see... Like, let's say this game gets re-released somehow. Remaster, remake, whatever. I don't see Nintendo making, like, major cuts. Like, I don't think that they're going to be like, let's make the Seahorse Quest only one egg. Like, they're probably going to keep that in. If this were to even happen, which is, is a very unlikely still... But I'm just thinking hypothetically. There could be opportunities for trimming some of the fat. At which point, that would be something that I would be willing to check out. But yeah, re replaying this is going to be a hard sell just be because of the length. And like the the thing is, I can justify longer RPGs or RPGs that are just as long, if not longer, because of story and characters and stuff like that. But it's just not the writing here is still pretty good, except for Bowser is like weirdly not written as well or Antasma, but like. It's more or less what you would come to expect from Mario and Luigi writing-wise. I don't think it's as good on that front as uh, the previous three, but it's still enjoyable. But like, am I am I even necessarily playing these games for the story, quote unquote? Not really. Certainly not this one. Certainly not this one. I, I could maybe say that, yeah, there are story elements that I like in the previous three. Where I would go so far as to say that that is an element of appeal with those games for me. You know, story and characters like Superstar Saga has Peasley and Cacletta and Fawful. And even like Queen Bean is kind of fun. And Pop, did I say Popple already? Popple and Rookie, right? Which is just Bowser, but... There's good character stuff there, and then, like, in Partners... I guess you have Kylie Koopa, but she's kind of... I don't know. I'm not, like, super wild about her, but... It's more so, like, the shrooms are entertaining to see on screen, even if they're not as compelling as villains. And then Bowser's Inside Story, of course, you have Bowser and Fawful and their dynamic, and... Even Midbus has moments where it's, like, entertaining. Midbus is, Mid, Midbus is kind of mid, to be honest, but it's in his name, so. Oh, shit. Balls. Damn it. I've already accepted defeat, it's fine. Oh shit, what? How? Why? Why was that so feasible, though? I want these 50s. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh... Anyone who's a member in chat... Keep the, uh, keep the emotes. They should be... 
They should be live. I thought there was another 50 that I could grab, but... Can I use the emotes? I better be able to, because it's my channel, but... Yeah, buddy. Check this shit out. Let's go. I think they turned out really good. Sadly, these are exclusive to channel members. How do I close this? But, I try to keep my channel membership fairly, fairly priced. $3 for the bottom tier a month. You get monthly updates, access to the emotes and the badges, and you support yours truly. Not, not to plug too hard, but you know, I like never mention it. I think those emotes turn out really sick, though. I don't know if, like, all of the detail... I mean, it's kind of small on my screen, just, like, based on my setup. But, I don't know, I think, they, I think they look good. They went through a few revisions at my request to get them to where they're at, so... Yeah, this is gonna be... Well, wait a second. Don't we just... We just hammer this shit, right? That's all I meant to do. Particles. Please tell me that's actually it, though. If that's it for the first piece, then we can definitely do this in one go. Hell yeah, dude. Hopefully they hopefully you guys think they turned out good. I think they look I think they look pretty damn good. Nice. One down, four to go. Oh, I guess we can go back in, but no reason to do that. And there's a fast travel point right out here, which is perfect. Which is perfect. And I think... I think when I hit... I want to say it's five members? I get an extra emote slot. That's how it works on YouTube, and I'm assuming Twitch is a similar thing, but I never got to the point where I could make emotes on Twitch, though. But where are we going next, though? I guess... I guess I can go to any, any of them? Oh, weird. You can't, you can't menu on top of the pipe. That's weird. I guess we'll just go in order, though. What's up, Daniela? Let's go Dozing Sands next. Just do these in order, so I don't have to, like, mentally keep track of shit. In which case... Where have I not been? Ah, okay, wait, we can use the ball. That's why they made you do it first, I see. So we effectively have high jump because we have the ball bouncing maneuver. Which will allow me to go further to the east. 
try to avoid these encounters. Enemies don't try to avoid you when you're higher level in these games, do they? Hard to tell. You would think they would, though. This is Mario and Luigi Dream Team, indeed. Playing on the good old Nintendo PC. Someone did someone did re-upload the latest build of Citra on like a new website. So like it is accessible. It's not it's not being worked on anymore, but it is out there. Alright, nice little shortcut. Although I can only hope this game does get a remaster someday for Switch 2 or whatever they call it. I think that'd be cool. But I'm all for, I'm all for like, no, I know, it's, it's just a joke. Can I make this? Nice. Um, okay, so I just spin jump across that, I guess. Big money. Get this snapshot thing. How do I check how many I have, though? I would agree. I think I think this series needs to be brought back somehow. Whether it be through some kind of collection or... I mean, I would take a new game, probably, over like a remaster or a collection, but all of the above would be good. It's just a shame that once Alpha Dream went out of business in, like, what, 2018 or whatever, Nintendo hasn't done, like, much of anything to uh, support this series. I guess Superstar Saga is on Switch Online, I think. Although you have to pay, like, the higher tier, I think, for that. This is a GBA. But no DS compatibility on the Switch yet, so... Which is kind of surprising, because the Wii U even had that. Granted, the Wii U had, like, the two... The two-screen thing going on, but... You could... I think on Wii U, you could just play it on a single screen still. You have the idea of a new Mario & Luigi collection? I think that'd be sick. It's just, like, Nintendo doesn't seem to be super fond of doing... Compilation releases... You know, like, Capcom's been doing it like crazy with all the Mega Man stuff. And even Konami did a couple of Castlevania collections, but... And I... I don't know, I just... I love video game collections. Like, a single executable that gives you access to multiple games in a series. I think that is super sick. <laughs> but the best we got from Nintendo is 3D All-Stars, which is like... It's fine. It's a collection of three great games, just like, generally speaking. But... Definitely lacking feature-wise and improvement-wise. Can I just bounce over this, though? Oh. Yeah. I don't know why I keep doing that. Hmm, I was just complaining about how long this game is, and I'm wondering... Like, do I do I keep doing these? I feel like it's probably about the time... <laughs> I think it's about time in the playthrough that I just start skipping pillows. And then if I really, really need... the extra whatever you get for them, then we can come back, but... Only played Super Star Saga. I mean, that's one of the better ones. Probably. I, I have some issues with the GBA version, but it's good. It's definitely good. I would recommend if you ever have the chance to play the other ones. I would say give them a shot. Bowser's Inside Story is definitely the fan favorite. And I'd say it's probably the best one overall. I've got some minor gripes with it, but it's more so just some like DS gimmick stuff with like the touchscreen and whatnot, but 
It's good stuff. I'm surprised that didn't hit me. Go ahead and unlock this fast travel point. Time to launch accordingly. So can I like drill? Oh. I kind of want that question block though, so... Well, Mario made it. Though I do, I, I do feel like Nintendo is not showing their full hand when it comes to what they have in store though because of the new hardware probably coming next year, but... We'll see. I think it was necessary for Bowser's Inside Story remake. Probably not. Probably not, to be honest. I know they made some tweaks and improvements, I guess, but... It was pretty unnecessary, I think. I think Superstar Saga definitely... I'm playing the Superstar Saga remake on my own time right now, and I, I'm... I'm, like, surprisingly impressed. And because that was a GBA title, it's like, you know, two generations removed. Several, well, I guess like all of the new entries had been released. Like Paper Jam came out in, what, 2015? So they had four more games under their belt. Go back to the first one, you know, improve some gameplay systems and whatnot. Seemed worth it, but for Bowser's, definitely less so, yeah. And plus, like, the frame rate is lower, which... Not, I guess not, like, a, a, a deal-breaker per se, but it's also, like... That is definitely a point in the original game's favor. Because yeah. the Super Star Saga remake, I think, is still... at 60 frames, apparently. I, I don't know how, but... Oh, what the? How do I... I can't bounce up there. If, uh, if Partners in Time gets a remake on Switch, will I play it? Uh, I'd be very interested in that, actually, yeah. Because Partners in Time... Partners in Time is good. Oh, it's not high enough, okay. Um, Partners in Time is good, but... Systems-wise, I think it's kind of shallow, and that's, 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 that's the main game in the series that I think could benefit from improvements and changes. Oh shit, they robbed me. But, uh, in addition to that, Partners in Time doesn't have a ton of DS, like, split-screen, touch-screen kinds of stuff going on, so I think it would translate pretty easily to a single screen. More so than Bowser's, for sure. And I actually think this game would translate to a single screen surprisingly well. They would just have to get kind of creative about it, but that's... That's what Nintendo does best, right? Is, is get creative, so... Oh, shit. I'm gonna need to launch from the top spot now. Lost 200 coins, yeah. I think we're we're kind of rolling in it right now, though. So I'm not. Yeah, we got like over 9,000 literally. So I'm not like super concerned. But that was unfortunate. Something to keep out, keep an eye out for. I should probably be doing more battles too. Honestly. Just to kind of keep pace, but... Oh. Nice. Now, it's not the dream world, so I don't have... Attack multiple foes. Slide right on the circle pad to toss bombs, then hit him with the A button. 
I can try this, I guess. Okay. Okay. That was my first time trying that one, so... And then... These are both... These both require tilts. Which I can do, but it's not ideal. Let me just go for the fireballs. Still not great at this one. And they're coming in. Nice. Going to hack your 3DS for getting this game. Yeah, <laughs> I, I won't tell the the uh, Nintendo ninjas. Don't worry. That is a good. That is a good way to go about it, though. Obviously, be careful because there's probably some sh shady shit out there. But I feel like I don't know. As someone who's dabbled with emulation for kind of a long time now, I feel like it's gotten less sketchy. Maybe I'm just being naive, or I know where to look. But it's like. I don't feel like I have to concern myself with, like, clicking on bad links or, like, whatever, really, as much anymore, at least. But that is a good way to go about it, because then you're also playing it on actual hardware that it was designed for, which definitely is um, the ideal with some of these features, with, like, the tilts, the gyroscope stuff, and the touchscreen and whatnot. Okay, I need to be a lot faster with that. Oh, and I like how... Okay. So, nice, so if you match up the colors, that's that's cool. I guess that's how you're intended to, to uh, handle that many enemies on screen at once. Oh, shit. That's fine. Nice. I did. I did know that the uh, the GBA version of Superstar Saga has the original Mario Bros. That was that was honestly like part of the fun growing up with that game, and and even when I. Before I streamed the GBA version of Superstar Saga on the channel, I, uh, I, like, played Mario Bros for, I don't know, it was probably only, like, 30 minutes, but that, playing that game feels longer than it actually is, but it can be pretty fun, surprisingly. Nice little bundle. I, I also liked how, where are the high rolls at, though? Go HP. But, uh, I know the GBA port of Super Mario World, which was, like, what, Super Mario Advance 2, also included Mario Bros. So that was, like, kind of kind of Nintendo's go-to when it came to uh, an extra mode in their GBA Mario titles. We're going to skip the pillows. Dozing or I like how it, they're gassing Dreambird up for knowing a lot of stuff, and literally he's been forgetful of like a bunch of stuff. The giant Luigi battles. I don't know when the next one's gonna be. But I I know there's at least gonna be one more. 
They're not super frequent. Like, I think I've only done two thus far. And I'm like... 23 hours into the game, which is wild. Somewhere below. Why do we go all this way up here, then? Alright, I'm gonna try not to get robbed this time. Nice, I actually hit one. I'm gonna run. I'm not too concerned about being underleveled. Maybe I should be, though, because some of these boss fights have been a little tricky, but I kind of like it that way. Got another cannon. I want to see if there's a collectible or something under here. Nice. Shy guys in the back. I wonder if that's one of the super bosses or if that's just one of the. Like, just some random enemy. Gotta be careful with the background enemies from what I understand, because they can be pretty strong. Okay, nothing over here, so that was kind of a waste. He still has iframes, wow. Surprised. Oh, I see. Still nailed it, so. It doesn't look mattressy. Looks like a log. Looks like one of those rotation things. Those, uh... Things that we used last time. Oh, is there a fight versus Bowser? You're saying Bowser Jr. in this game? Hmm. Yeah, I can't say I I can't say I know too much about the these these uh mid to later portions of the game because when this game came out I bought it and played it, but uh I stopped I think it was during the beach segment that I did last time, which, in retrospect, is understandable, because that was pretty tedious, but... How many pieces? Uh, this is piece number two. So I got the... I went to the mountain and got that one. Oh, Bowser Jr. is the optional boss at the end of the battle ring? That's kind of sick. Well, that's piece number two. Wow, that was, uh, I'm surprised that's all there was to it. But since, since the game is commenting on it, I'm, yeah, I was gonna say. When the game acknowledges that things were a little too easy, then you know that there's more. But, uh, Jeffrey, I, since you just turned up, I've been playing the remake of Superstar Saga, and... I'm kind of impressed. I gotta say. I'm still pretty early, so I don't know if it's gonna fix a lot of my issues with it, but... Even just having the map on the bottom screen is kind of big. <laughs> there... Yeah, in the Dream World, there's, there's many Luigis. 
in fact. It's just that it's n that it's like not what Well, I think I I like the accessibility, well not accessibility, but like kind of the the map thing, I like how you can select different actions on the touch screen. It's a little annoying having to rotate through all of them sequentially. And like you can go back and stuff, but it's interesting. Where, where did I just get to? I'm, at, I'm I just started Chocola Woods, so I'm still pretty early. But I, I think what impresses me most about it is that it's like I just that I don't dislike it. I guess that it's not like, oh, this isn't, you know, as good as the GBA version or something. I'm like, I don't know. I, and for some reason, I feel like the difficulty is higher in the early game. Like, I don't think I've game over it at all, but I've been having to use items more than I remembered having to do against, like, Queen Bean and... Well, I guess the, the mountain, the dinosaur boss was, like, pretty easy, but... Queen Bean was giving me a little bit of trouble, honestly. I don't know if it was because I was underleveled or what, but... Beyblade Lu Luigi, yeah. No, we've, we've got a... Well, that actually reminds me. We actually can't do it here, sadly, but... Uh, I did get the ball form, which is pretty fun to mess around with. Oh, wait, now don't I just head back? Or no, we take the ceiling, okay. All the enemies and bosses were buffed a bit. Oh, okay. Kekleta has 420 HP compared to her OG fights. Oh! Very nice. Oh yeah, double jump attack, that's true. I kind of like the, the double jump. I kind of like that. I mean, I was saying in Partners in Time when that was introduced, uh, how much I like that extra dynamism. And yeah, in Partners in Time, you're alternating you know, X and then A or Y and then B. But it's not that much different from just pressing A twice or B twice for the double jump. But I kind of like it. Uh, obviously, some things like, like ranks and stuff are not present. But just like the little introductions of stuff that came in games after it, the little quality of life things, like the map. Yeah, they changed advanced moves a good bit, you're right. Yeah, they're separate, and, and I like that it actually tells you the inputs ahead of time, where it's like, you know, it'll be like A, A, then like a gap, and then B, A. So that way you kind of know, know what to expect, and you don't have to do it on the fly as much. It's cool, it's good stuff, so far. Again, still very early, but... OG was sli slightly obtuse about that. I do I do remember Rookie, yeah. Uh, Rookie and Popple are definitely one of the more memorable uh, aspects to Superstar Saga. Let's see here. Oh, wait a second. Hold up. Wait, did I just screw up by, uh... Oh, I did. Damn it. Yeah, Rookie doesn't remember himself. Yeah, that's right. Why can I not... What the hell is going on? Can I not enter this pipe, or am I being, like... Dumb. I can't tell. Oh, no, wait, I have to be on the floor, don't I? That's what that is. How many story ideas are crammed into Yeah, yeah, it's... I'm assuming that the playtime is still around the same, right? I mean, obviously, bosses might take a little bit longer, but still kind of in that 15-hour range, which is pretty good. Pretty solid. I was saying earlier, too, how, like... I don't know if I can take another 20 hours of this game if there's actually 20 more hours. It's good. It's fun. I like it. It's too long, though. 
It's a little bloated. How do they spin the, the the log of wood when Luigi's on it? I think Starlow is kind of handling that from the outside. However she can. She's like kicking it, I guess. I don't know. Think about it. Skeleton of Superstar Saga's part one plot is very similar to Dream Team's. Villains steal wishing object, then hide away in a base. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, for sure. I would say so. And I, I would say that Intasma's design is like... Somewhat Cacleta esque, also. At least once he like digivolves into his like full form or whatever. Yeah, hydrate. Yeah, and like turning into a head bat and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's cool. I. I don't know, I could I could very well see the Superstar Saga remake being my go-to way to play it. But but then again, if if those same frustrations are still there, it's you know what it's gonna it's gonna come down to like the underwater section and the bean star hunt. And honestly, I mean I know where the bean star pieces are now, since I've done that section recently, but Who's the middle brother? I don't know. That, that might be that might be a conspiracy theory we need to evaluate, but um, yeah, I do think like yeah, it's gonna come down to that beach segment really, and like the underwater stuff. I, I would imagine, obviously, it was for 3DS, so with the stereoscop stereoscopic 3D, it's gonna be easier to maneuver. Underwater now has image. Oh my god, that's gonna be so much better. That's gonna be so much better, man. I guess they just added new like blockades or something to where you're not supposed to go until later. But man, dude, this the underwater stuff in Superstar Saga pissed me off. I was like not, not having it. We're also skipping pillows from here on out because I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to take too long. But I, I was also hypothesizing earlier of like, if this game got a remaster, a remake or whatever, which like it doesn't need a remake necessarily, but it's like, if this gets ported slash remastered to a new system, I was like, I was thinking like, how can they cut down on this game's runtime and on the padding? Cause a lot of it's baked into like what, like story goals and stuff. So it's not like they could just cut entire dream segments out, you know? And so I was kind of hypothesizing, like, what if they just upped your movement speed? Like, would that be enough? Needs a running feature? That's kind of what I was thinking is, like, the best solution. Because Nintendo's not going to... They're not going to cut, like... They're not going to make the beach segment be just one egg instead of three. They're going to still make you get all of them, you know? say the worst the worst mario rpg what is the worst mario rpg i don't think any of them are bad but mm, i haven't played paper jam yet that might be a contender just based on what i've heard but in this series it's probably partners in time at least thus far because i haven't played paper jam yeah, partners in time is still very good though and if we're talking generally Ugh. <laughs> I don't want people breathing down my neck for this take, but I'm not like super hot on the original Super Mario RPG, to be honest. It's a good game. It's good. That's kind of like where I'm at with it, though. I'm like, it's a good game. I'm glad I played it once. Not really too keen on playing it again. But yeah, I, I think Paper Jam is probably going to be a contender from what I understand. Where am I going next? Yeah, good, but overhyped to Helen back. Yeah, for sure. I would agree. Final Fantasy VI is still my pick for the best uh, SNES RPG. For my tastes. Just because, like, story... Like, dude, oh, it's so good. Like, making my way through it again, it's so good. I would actually... 
I know, Jeffrey, you said that you're not a big RPG guy, but you you like Mother 3 a lot. I would check out Final Fantasy VI. If I'm gonna if I'm gonna pitch you like a Final Fantasy game, I would say try six. It's it's an SNES RPG, so it's not super long. Great, like great story, the music, oh my god, like the pixel remaster music and stuff. So good. Um, very Mother 3-esque in how characters emote and whatnot with their facial expressions and whatever. It's got a very serious, very serious tone, but like, oh, it's... I, I don't want to talk about it too much because I want to save it for a video, but... FF6 is special, dude. Uh, Pillow Castle, then? Paper Jam is just Dream Team with Paper Mario Sticker Star. That's probably true. That's probably true. With some Paper Mario components in there. I'm actually, I'm glad that I played those first two Paper Mario games as well, because going into Paper Jam, I'll, I'll at least have some, um... So many toad hunts. Oh god, wait, that, yeah, that sounds like something from Sticker Star or something, from what I understand. I, I've only played the first two Paper Marios, so... Uh... What, what was I gonna say? If I hadn't... Like... Well, okay. I guess in 2015, when Paper Jam came out, I was... I had pivoted over to Xbox, Uh, I pivoted over to Xbox, so I wasn't really... I, I mean, I played probably some 3DS stuff here and there, but I was kind of, like, not done with Nintendo, but I was taking a break from Nintendo at that time. Plus, Dream Team, I fell off of during the Beach segment, so it's like, wasn't really looking for another one. And I also had no affinity towards Paper Mario. It was a 2016, my bad. But e even more so then, even then I was even more so, I was playing like Mass Effect for the first time, I was playing the Batman Arkham games, the Bioshock games, stuff that I had missed. And I played some Bioshock on PC prior to that, but uh, I was like in a whole nother world when it came to video gaming at that time. Plus not being super hot on Dream Team and having no affinity for Paper Mario, so it's just like this trifecta of not caring that led me to uh, not get Paper Jam when it first came out. That's... Oh wait, we can bounce up there. Wasn't a Mario RPG fan until like 2018, that's fair, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I had... I grew up playing Superstar Saga. I had a friend who had had Partners in Time. I, want, I, I keep wondering, because I remembered more about Partners in Time than I thought, and I don't know if I, like, watched a YouTube playthrough back in the day or something, or... or what the deal was. So you're nostalgia, but despite being so obsessed. Sometimes that happens. I mean... I didn't get... I didn't really get into Final Fantasy or Persona until, like, 2020. And look at me now. I've, I've played the first nine Final Fantasies. And 15 and 7 Remake. And like with Persona, I haven't played as many of the games because there's not that many to play to begin with, but... Uh, that is a series that I really like a lot, for sure. You actively avoided Mario and Luigi for some reason. That's interesting. I mean, there's definitely stuff that when I was a kid that I would avoid... Or like, swore off without really ever giving it a shot. Honestly, that was, that was like, kind of anime in general for me. Not anime style, per se, but, like, Nintendo stuff isn't super anime, I would say, um, especially at the time, but... Like, just watching anime, and I'm not, I'm not even a big anime watcher to this day, but... It is something that I got into during the pandemic. It, like, took me a while. Like, yeah, I'd seen, I'd been, seen bits and pieces of stuff over the years and stuff, sure, but... Never really something I went out of my way to do. Is this what we have to do? Do we have to do this for the, uh... Yeah, 
used to hate games that didn't let you replay levels and whatnot. Honestly, kind of fair. Oh, just the first boss? Okay, sick. Oh, lit. Oh, we can do giant battles, too. That's kind of cool. Oh, so we are getting closer. So if this is like... Like Somnom Woods boss, and then like two, like Bowser, and then Antasma or something. Well, maybe, maybe the final boss isn't here, though. Maybe this is Bowser Jr. over here. Antasma X is scary. That's kind of cool, though. I do like, like, I'm not a big post-game guy. Like, I, I generally, at least growing up, I wouldn't do a lot of the post- Well, it depends. Usually, I wouldn't do a lot of post-game stuff. Even in games with insane post-games, like Battle Network 3 has an insane post-game. And I know that it's crazy cool, but I've only done, like, so much of it. It's like, usually once I finish the main story, I'm kind of like, okay, on to, the, on to the next one. And I'm kind of still like that. But, but it's nice... You know, you leave the game installed, and it's like, oh, if you want to jump in... Do a little bit of extra combat. Rematch some bosses. You know, like, there, there's stuff to do to come back to. Without just doing another... Another, uh, playthrough. Yeah, boss gauntlets with... Yeah, this is cool. I think boss gauntlets are cool. A cool feature to have. I just do shells. Do you get EXP from these? I would think maybe not, but I think we just spam shells. I would do the bombs, but I'm not very good at it. So I don't want to risk, uh... I don't want to risk taking this boss too lightly. What the hell? I guess that was early, but I'm like... Oh, shit. He's quick. You do get coins. That makes sense, though. Because otherwise you could just infinitely grind against... Yeah, that would be, be kind of cheap. Makes sense. In fact, a lot of Final Fantasy games don't give you experience for bosses. They oftentimes give you, like, ability points or... Like, some other form of EXP if there is something like that, but... Like, Final Fantasy... Five, and even, like, Final Fantasy VIII is a similar way, but they kind of... The job system and the junction system is, like, kind of similar-ish. Junctions are just more tedious, but... It's like you get AP in Final Fantasy VIII towards, like, leveling up your summons, or, like, your guardian forces, which are what you equip to your characters. Same with Final Fantasy V with, like, leveling up your job level, but not your actual level. So you do get something... Like, I don't know, I, 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 on one hand, I kind of like that, but on the other hand, it is fun getting a level up. Uh, it is fun getting a level up after bosses. I That was more obviously early, but... Oh, we have a limited number of turns, okay. I feel like I'm doing good damage, I hope. I need to, like, not miss my final kick, though. But yeah, I've also been... 
been like chipping away at at a Devil Survivor overclocked for like over a month at this point. And I'm like, I like it, but it's one of those games where it's like, I'm not excited to play it. And like, when, once I sit down to finally play it, I'm like, yeah, this is good. And I, and I like aspects of this, but it's like, booting it up feels like a chore for some reason. And so I'm like, I'm saying like a lot, I know. But I'm just, I'm just torn on dropping it or not. And it feels bad because there's some cool shit there, but it's like, I don't know. The shitty thing is that it's, it's one of the fan favorites when it comes to Megami Tensei stuff. And like, yeah, it's good, but I'm really just not quite seeing it as far as like, this is the... I think it is just kind of tedious, yeah. There's like some tedious elements to it. It's it's like a visual novel style story, and that part is really cool and good. And I like that aspect. And the gameplay is like strategy RPG, so like kind of Fire Emblem, but like kind of not. Because you're doing, it's like you move around on a field, kind of like Fire Emblem, but it's a lot smaller. And so like the movement strategy kind of element is not really there, but instead to make up for that, you're doing like regular RPG battles when you get into combat. And that aspect's okay, I guess. It's a little... I'm at the point where it's kind of just a little easy, and so I feel like I'm going through the motions a little bit. And it's weird, because I'm not super hot on visual novels, but I almost feel like if it was just a visual novel with less combat, I might like it more, actually. And so, like, I could still do a video on it. I would just have to be like, yeah... I dropped it at X point. I'm like pretty far in, so I part of me wants to push through, but it's like It's not like with Final Fantasy 6 right now, which is a replay, granted, but FF6 I'm like looking forward to playing it when I sit down to play it. Whereas Devil Survivor not as much. Game has bad gameplay and good, good story, you just use YouTube. The thing is, the gameplay is not bad, it's just... Preparation is kind of tedious. Like, if you're changing your team setup, it's pretty fucking tedious. Um, I like I like fusion still, like, demon fusion is cool, as it always is. It's a little simple compared to, like, the mainline games. But it's still fusion, and fusion is fun, and, you know, figuring out, okay, I need... I want this demon to have this resist skill, or this attacking skill. Do I have someone I can fuse together with another demon to transfer that up to this demon I'm trying to fuse, or do I need to go a step lower and fuse this demon again to like pass skills on in a certain way? And, like, it, demon fusion is super cool. It's just like you couple that with team prep, where you're you're you have like squads of three like three or four squads of three that you can deploy. And it's these demons that have these skills that you're fusing over to them, right? But then your main characters, you have like a bunch of skills to pick from and you can assign them individually. And that's where the tedium comes in is like you're assigning each skill individually to cover like cover weaknesses or like whatever for the demons that you're allotting to these uh, team leaders or whatever. But the catch is that each skill can only be equipped by one of your um, team leaders or whatever. So that you can't have, like, everyone have the same healing spell. Like, only one person can assign that. And so that's why you want to make up for that with the demons. And it's just, I don't know. It's one of those things where I'd rather just play mainline. Because a lot of that stuff is found in mainline, but it's, it's kind of less tedious. Because you have the fusion stuff, which is super cool, but without the skill allotment stuff, that's kind of a chore. And and the thing is, you don't need to... I'm basically like a, like doing the video for it right now, but it's like, you don't need to change that up super often. 
in the early game, you do need to do it more often because you just have less at your disposal. But where I'm at, which I'm on day six of eight, so like it's like split up into days, and you play like each 30-minute chunk is like an action, whether that be talking to an NPC or a story event or a battle, and that takes up like 30 minutes of your like 12-hour day or whatever. It's like kind of Persona-esque, sort of, in that way. Um, but then like free battles, which you can which you can grind, don't take up time. Which I think is kind of a mistake. It, it's just shitty, because, like, if I feel pressure to grind, then I'm, like, I'm battling, and the battling's fun enough, but then it's, like, I feel like I'm not making progress. It's, I don't know. Maybe it's a pacing thing. But the story is really interesting. It's... It's really cool. It's, like, about a... It's about a lockdown. Like, the, basically, the government locks down this, this area of Tokyo... You don't know why, and then demons start, start showing up, and it's like, oh shit, what the hell is going on? There's a cult, there's like military involvement, you get to kind of choose who you're kind of aligning yourself with narratively and getting to know each of the characters, the major players that are in the lockdown. It's, it's pretty cool. Like, I like the story stuff a lot, and then I have to do the, the combat deployment stuff, and and grinding and like whatever and it's just it, it just drags it down a bit even though i do like enjoy the gameplay fine i would just rather play mainline smt or i'd rather play fire emblem from like the strategy rpg standpoint yeah i don't know maybe i will drop it i don't fucking know I'm like, I'm so torn. I'm, it's just, I've been chipping away at it for like, what's today's date? For like probably six weeks or something. And so I'm just like, man, and it's not super long either. I'm like, it's like, I'm like 25 hours in maybe at most. Maybe I will just push through and just not grind or something. Just like brute force my way. Now that I kind of feel like I can do that. And plus, because it's a Mega Ten game also, it's like... If I push myself to finish it, at least I won't... Well, I probably will still get, get good comments and stuff, but... At least at that point, I can say that I beat it. And it's not that I want to drop it because I'm, like, stuck on something. I just think the gameplay is kind of tedious and boring-ish. Or repetitive, at least, in kind of a bad way. Oh, but all RPGs are repetitive. Yeah, but if they're fun, then I don't care. About the repetitiveness. As much. Mushrise Park... Wood Shores. I'm talking mad shit. I, the game's good. I, I can recognize that. It's it's like high quality. Story stuff is interesting. Some cool gameplay ideas. It's just it's just tedious and not in the fun way. Well, when is tedium ever fun? I guess it's more of a perspective thing, right? Like a lot of RPG systems and inventory management and stuff can be seen as tedious, but sometimes, oftentimes, I would say that I find it enjoyable. This is going to be... Let me check down here real quick. I know there was that one ledge. Okay, yeah, good thing I did this. Because I feel like I've played enough of it to have a pretty solid opinion of it. And, like, I understand the systems and stuff. And honestly, when it comes to, like, negative comments and shit like that, fuck them. So I'm just like, I just, I don't know. I'm at the point where I just kind of laugh it off, or just try to, like, kill them with kindness or whatever. It's pretty rare. It's just like... I just, I, I know that if I'm, like, 
if I'm critical of a, of a beloved game and I haven't finished it, there's going to be people being like, get good, get good, you have bad taste, you don't understand the systems, and it's like, no, I understand the systems, and the game's not really difficult, particularly, except for the early game, maybe. And some missions were annoying, but like, whatever. It's not like I'm stuck on something, it's just like, I'm not having fun anymore. <laughs> But the story's so interesting, so I'm like, ugh. Maybe I will. And the thing is, it's a game with multiple endings, too, so I would end up probably Googling and watching a lot of that stuff anyway, but... Yeah, it's either perfect or trash on the internet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing, but, I mean... It really is just one of those things where people can believe me or not, whether I'm, like, being honest. I feel like I feel like it's pretty apparent that I'm always honest about how I feel about games. And that I'm not, like, bullshitting for clout or, like, whatever, but... There are a lot of cynics out there who will, who will pin that on you. Or try to. But my rebuttal is just that there's plenty of popular things that I like in gaming. The popular the thing is like popularity and like fan favorites and stuff do shift over time too. So I don't know. Like Mario World and Mario Galaxy 1 and 2 are my favorite Mario games. That's pretty popular, I think. I think Maybe Mario 64. Mario 64 is probably more popular, but that's that. Me not holding Mario 64 in as high regard as a lot of other people is probably unpopular, I guess. So maybe not the best example. Fire Emblem Three Houses, extremely popular. I loved it. Um, I mean, Galaxy is super popular too. I just feel like I don't know. I feel like 64 maybe gets more love, but maybe that's just because it gets speedrun more or something. Because I don't think Galaxy is super speedrunner friendly. I mean, I'm sure you can do some crazy shit, but the levels are... are linear, largely, so there's not as much freedom when it comes to that. Um, I feel like Zelda, my opinions, are pretty unpopular, but it's also one... I feel like Zelda's one of those series similar to, like, classic Mega Man, where everyone's order is different, pretty much. Except that nowadays, a lot of people have Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom at the very top. And so that's where I kind of differ, but... 64 was an impact. Yeah, for sure. Oh, it did. I mean, it definitely had a huge impact on, on just gaming in general, for sure. And and I think... I think that's really... that I think that is a big part of some people's perception of games, and it's not neither right nor wrong. I mean, it's all just a matter of per perspective, right? We all have our own unique perspectives, and they can differ, and that's fine. I think some people put a lot of stock into cultural impact when it comes to games, or they use that, not everyone, but some people do use that as validation for liking certain things, or as a rebuttal to you not liking it must mean that you are trying to be a contrarian because it's so popular or was so impactful. And that's just not the case. It's just it's just a taste thing, man. Like Mega Man 2 is not my favorite Mega Man. Final Fantasy 7 is not my favorite Final Fantasy. Breath of the Wild is not my favorite Zelda. You know, it's like But I'm not really, I, but I just, like, I'm at the point in my life where I just don't really, I'm, I'm curious about the general consensus for sure, but I'm not, like, really all that involved with it these days. Like, I'm not really, like, following that kind of shit. People will claim you're faking not liking something because popular equals perfect. Yeah, it, it's weird. It's real weird. Like, because it was popular, it means that it must be flawless or, like, whatever. Meanwhile, those same people shit on, like, Marvel movies and shit like that when they're insanely popular. And I'm not gonna defend- I'm not gonna defend Marvel movies, I really don't give a shit. 
but like I haven't really paid much attention to that since Endgame, but uh, it is kind of hypocritical in that way, though. IMO, because you know it's the same crowd. You know it's the exact same crowd as shitting on Marvel movies that is uh, that are defending like older games or like whatever. Yeah, regardless of quality, I was burnt out too. And, it seem and on top of that, it seems like the quality is lacking, so... What's the deal with... Th oh, we can just drill straight across. But yeah, like... And then also, like, the whole you-had-to-be-there thing... Which I don't like, because it's like, okay, let me just let me just hop into my time machine real quick. Give my one-year-old self a copy of Final Fantasy VII for the PS1. Which I which is a system I've never owned. And then it's and then it's also just like I know I'm bitching about the same stuff that I I don't, I don't want to harp on this kind of stuff too much, but it's like it's also I've said it before and I'll say it again. It's like there are there are games older than some of these older games that I don't care for. It's not because they're old. It's not like There are plenty of older games older than like some of these games that I'm not. And it's not even that I dislike them either. It's not that I dislike them. It's just I don't I don't love them and hold them in like as high regard as a lot of other people. But then whenever there's backlash for that kind of thing, or whenever I see someone being, like, not even towards me, just in general, like, annoying about it, it, like, makes me not like that thing more than if you would just, like, keep your mouth shut. It's weird. People just regurgitate whatever is popular to defend their favorite games and whatnot. Yeah, and I mean, people are... I'm not trying to control people. It's like, they can do whatever they want, I guess. It's just... I, I'd like to be able to have a more nuanced conversation with the, with those people to try to, like, get through to them, I guess, but the other party has to be willing to have that kind of conversation for it to even work. <laughs> they must all agree with me. My opinion is king. Yeah, literally. I just don't, I just don't feel like that personally, so I, it's hard for me to relate to people who feel like that, because I just... I recognize that a lot of my favorite games are not for everyone, but, like, they're for me, which is what matters most to me. Like, I could give less of a shit. I'll recommend stuff if it sounds like... Like, with Final Fantasy VI, I'm like, I think that game's awesome. That's, like, maybe my favorite one, if not, it's between six and nine, for sure. But, uh... And, like, it, it seems like a game that that you would like, so I recommended it. But it, it's like, there's so many other games that I like that I recognize that some things could put people off. Uh, I guess Twilight Princess is the best example, which I brought up last time, where it's like, that opening is pretty slow, but it very much is one of those games where if you stick with it, there is a lot of great shit. Not gonna say it's perfect, but then again, I, I I would argue the Twilight Princess is not far from perfect. I would call it a masterpiece. I don't know that that necessarily means perfect, but that's the other thing too. Is like ten out of ten doesn't mean, doesn't literally mean perfect because that's impossible for a video game to be perfect. Don't give enough of a shit of what other people think to care. Yeah. It's just, I don't know, when people feel so passionately, like, negative on something that I like, or vice versa, it's like, more so it's the negativity that gets to me, I guess, than the positivity. Like, if some, if, if I dislike something and someone really likes it, it's like, hey, more power to you, man. But when it comes to the negative side of things, I just, like, that that's kind of when I tune out a lot of the time. 
if there's something that I genuinely like or love. Because, yeah, what matters most, not just for me, but for anyone, is like... Stop saying like, goddammit. <laughs> um, is, uh... Is that your favorite games mean something to you? Not that they mean something to someone else. We're just talking about uh, internet discourse stuff being not nuanced. I don't even know how this came up. How do I... Only annoying to me when someone keeps bringing it up over and over. Like the same person. Is that a, is that a hint? <laughs> is that a hint that I need to stop talking about this? No, I'm kidding. But, uh... No, it... I don't know. Oh, you know why it came up is because I was talking about how... I might drop Devil Survivor, and that's like a fan favorite in Megami Tensei, and I'm just like, it's good, it's, it's a good game, it's not a bad game by any means, but I'm not like, I'm not really like feeling it at this point, this far in, so I'm thinking about dropping it, and so I'm like, just on forums and shit, yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's why I don't even really, I try not to peruse that stuff too often. Where the fuck do I go? Oh, here we go. I guess I just wait for it to line up or something. It's definitely the longest segment thus far, but we already have three out of five, so it's making pretty good time, I would say. Uh, oh, that's right. So that opens this up, but then we can fly back. After the large padded chunks, no more. Is it basically just Somnom Woods, and then... I hope I'm saying that right. And then the final castle? After this? Or is there more? Because it... I feel like... Well... I was saying earlier how each of these segments is kind of like a two-parter. So it's possible that Somnom Woods takes two... Oh, wait a second, I see. I think? Wait, so when this... Oh, but it's, it's horizontal, so it's like the wrong way. Oh, I wonder, though... My Super Mario Brothers wonder though. Wait, that's not gonna work. Yeah, because we're backwards. Whoops. That was bad. Whoops. It's a bit of a section of Wakeport, Somnum Woods, and then Castle, and that's it. Okay, sick. Yeah, this'll work. This'll put us back on this one in such a way that I can't do what I need to do, actually. Oh yeah, because I, I can't stay... Oh, wait a second. I see it. I see the way. Yeah, no, you're right, you're right, you're right. Trying, trying it from the middle was the right call. I, like, didn't even think of that. Dude, Twilight Princess is so good. It's kind of a slow burn, but, like, in a good way, I feel. It's not, it's not like a game like this, where you have the tedious segments later on. And yeah, okay. Unlocking City in the Sky is a little tedious, not gonna lie, but it's really, it's not really that bad. Especially because they mark the locations on your map. It's like kind of annoying. But the dungeons, dude, and the atmosphere, and Midna, and 
even like the story to an extent. Really just the middle you don't like from a pacing perspective. Hmm. Like like Arbiter's Grounds and stuff like that. Cause I yeah, I would say the build up to Arbiter's Grounds, like you 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 restore Midna, right? And then you can teleport any at any time without being in the Twilight Realm. Oh, Dream Team, okay. I was like I was like Twilight Princess, I was like middle section. But you never played TP, okay. Okay. You definitely should. I think the GameCube version's the way to go, personally. I I have this I have this crackpot theory that I don't think is that crackpot, that the Wii version put a lot of people off because of the waggle. There's not really there's not really much to spoil, to be honest. It's a lot of the appeal of the game is the dungeon design. Because that's the thing, it's like Zelda... It's tricky because... Ever since... I think Donkey did a video on like the story of Super Mario Brothers, right? Or something like that, where it's like... The story is... The... Experience of going through the levels. And like that, that journey is the story. And so... That kind of like changed my perspective on when I talk about story, quote-unquote, in, um, in video games, but, like, you know, the final boss, dude, the final boss is so sick. It's so sick. Four, four fucking phases? Four phases. You get, like, the original Ganondorf fight, basically, but against Zelda this time. Then you fight him in his beast form, which you can fight, I think, in human form with Iron Boots or as Wolf Link. I don't know if you can do the Iron Boots thing. I don't know that I've tried it, because I like fighting him one-on-one. -on -one. And then you do... The horseback one is, like, kind of not the greatest, but it wasn't as bad as I remembered when I played it most recently, which was last year. And then that, that final 1v1... And then you get the 1v1 sword fight, man. Oh, Tigers can die. Yeah, and then Ganondorf, like, just taking, taking the sword. Yeah, it... He, like, stands up with the Master Sword, like, lodged in his chest. It's so... It's so hard, dude. It's so good. Yeah, that shit's peak. Although, to be fair, Tears of the Kingdom had a pretty cool final boss. I didn't play it, because I fucking fell off hard at the Spirit Temple, because that shit was ass. But, uh... That final boss looked really cool. Particularly just the final phase when you're like flying around on the dragon and shit. It's super sick. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems like kind of like a... A, um... Victory lap kind of, uh, kind of fight. But spectacle-wise, it's cool. I mean, I wouldn't say that the Twilight Princess final boss is particularly difficult either. But it's mostly just because Zelda games, in general, aren't really that difficult. The difficulty is usually just figuring out what to do. And, like, the puzzling aspect, if anything. Yeah, just glad that... Yeah, I, I was glad about that, too. I was glad about that, too. Now, honestly, like... Even the marginal improvements of the dungeons and tiers... And the tool set, I think, was more interesting. And, like, having unique bosses, even if they weren't, like, amazing, they were still, like, different, at least. Like, notably different. I, I infamously, on my on my Zelda... My 3D Zelda bosses tier list that I did before tiers came out, I I ranked... I think it was, like, Thunder Blight and Wind Blight. I got confused. Like, I literally, I literally called them the wrong thing and ranked them as such because I just, like, could not tell them apart. If you ask me. Like, I, I genuinely forgot. Buh. This way. 
I gotta get used to my my Midwestern accent. I'll take it. I'll take it from here. Go cool Sonic Heroes reference. Make a save. The music in this game is so good, though, that I don't even really mind that we're doing chores. Like, the vibes are there. The enemy variety in the combat is there. The progression systems... The progression systems are kind of there. The story's not there. Characters... Nah, not as much as the other games, you know? So it's like... You've got... You've got there's definitely pros and cons. Gameplay-wise, very good. Pacing, meh. Story, meh. You know, Luigi carries this game's characters. I'm curious to see what happens in Somnum, because I know that's where you said the, that most of his arc takes place. Oh, they're doing the Thousand Year Door thing. Anybody know what they're changing in Thousand Year Door Remake? Like, majorly? Is there a difficulty mode? Is there, like, less backtracking? Can you, like, accept multiple quests at once? That would be a huge thing. If you could accept mul multiple, like, job board requests in Thousand Year Door at once, that would be, like, a literal game-changer when it comes to doing side content. Because that shit, that shit is tedious. Legitimately. And there's only a handful that are really worth doing. Nothing Shakespearean, but it's still cool. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's fair. Make the areas less hallway-like. Yeah. Like, inner can- Oh, yeah, like, in, in Thousand Year Door, yeah, yeah, I was, like, trying to think back, I was like, what was I talking about? Yes. Yeah, because the backtracking is, like, the major thing. And I would definitely agree. I think the vibes in Thousand Year Door are great, and so it's like... It's kind of like this game, where it's like, I don't really mind when it's a little bit tedious or chore-like, but... Even just increasing Mario's movement speed... I mean, that would kind of break getting into encounters, right? Getting ambushed. Maybe, like, re-implementing the spin move from 64. Because that made getting around fun and faster. Oh god, there's a channel... I don't watch their stuff super often, because they don't upload that often. What are they, what's their channel called? They did a video on Mar Paper Mario 64, they did one on Thousand Year Door, they did one on... Earthbound Zero, I think? And Mega Man X4? Loot. L-U-T-E. So maybe a little bit hard to find, but... I enjoy, uh... They only have a few videos up, but I like their videos, they're fun. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Um, I feel like there was another channel that I had gotten into recently. Did I sub to any? Oh, Bickery Box 12. That's right. It's weird. I I don't really care much about modern Sonic stuff, but I I like watching. Like I mentioned, Pariah 695 at one point, where like I like his his Sonic stuff in particular, and then Bickery Box, I like his Sonic stuff as well. But it's so weird, like, I, I like hearing people talk about Sonic stuff, but I don't really, like, I don't, I'm not super interested in playing it. Maybe that's not super weird. Yeah, Bickery's pretty good. He's, he, he kind of has the humor down, too. Like, his videos are very entertaining. 
interesting to hear people passionately discuss stuff. Yeah, for sure. For sure, for sure. Yeah, but even, even then, like, stuff you would consider to be boring, potentially, can be made interesting with, with a good teacher. Or I guess in this case, good presenter, right? But it's similar, like, in school. Even the most boring of subjects that you're not interested in, if you have a good teacher, makes it a hell of a lot better. Like, that's why a lot of the educational channels on YouTube are so are so good, even though in a classroom setting I would be bored out of my mind. But like the way that channels like Veritasium and I can't name any others off the top of my head, but like any like educational channel, it's like they get the presentation down and they, and they convey what they're trying to convey eloquently enough. And it's like, you got me, like you've hooked me, you know? Most stuff is interesting. School somehow makes the innate human instinct of curiosity boring. You all, I think for one, it's because you're young when you're in school. So it's like, I was very, like, I was very ignorant about of certain things, especially historically, where it was like, it's like, I don't give a shit about this. You know, like, I don't give a shit about this holiday or like that or this or that or whatever when it came to like older historical events and shit. And like the older I got, the more I did become interested in that and like how did how did we get here, whether it be like culturally or economically or like whatever, whatever. Like these these things that I probably learned some like was supposed to learn somewhat or was taught at least in school that I'm now coming back to and like actually learning because I'm interested in it, you know? Going out of my way for it. Learn more from the internet about animals than school. Yeah, actually, you know what? Animal channels... Channels that cover, like, biology and, like, animal stuff, they do a really good job of that, too. From what I've seen. Like, even something comedic like Tear Zoo, I feel like does a good job. Which I haven't, I haven't watched a ton of Tear Zoo, but I've seen some here and there. And it's, like, presented in, in a fun way. He's got, like, kind of a shtick with a tearing thing of, like, you know, referring to it as, like, Oh, you know, this particular meadow was not very kind to the dinosaurs because the giant meteor got buffed, you know? It's stuff like that. It's it's fun. What am I doing? Progress. Progress. Driftwood shore. Like corals are animals. Yeah, I think that's kind of wild. Starfish have eyes on their arms. Lizards have a, a pseudo third eye and a bunch of other. Weird yeah, yeah. I've learned a lot of stuff from that too, from uh, from animal channels and whatnot. I don't know that I've retained a ton of it, but it is interesting. And like every so often, something will like, I'll be in a conversation and like something will click in my mind, and it's like, oh yeah, like this this fun fact or like this thing that I heard about that in a video at one point. Driftwood. Is it faster to go on foot? No, let's just take the pipe. Uh, we'll just go from the entrance, probably. I'm, I'm assuming Madame Brooke will have uh, something to say about this. Maybe. Maybe not. Yes. Some insane creatures that people don't talk about. Yeah, there's there's some wild shit out there for sure. Especially in the ocean. Freaks me out. But it's cool though. It's cool to learn it, uh, learn about it from the distance, but... I'm already not a big fan of, swim of swimming in the ocean. And, uh... The more I learn about it, the more I'm like, yeah, get me the fuck away from there, please. Whip spiders and sea cucumbers that have legs and walk around and shit called sea pigs. It sounds wild. I literally have no idea what you're talking about because I'd have to look it up, but... 
Because, like, I know sea cucumbers from, like, Spongebob, but I don't know what they actually look like. I'm sure they just look like cucumbers, but I don't know, like, how they maneuver and whatever. Are they, like, caterpillar-type things or, like, whatever? And, yeah, it's a whole thing. I see. Uh-huh. Nani? <laughs> Luigi, wow. <laughs> it's like that one divine. Wow. The cucumber looking worms. Related to starfish, interesting. Some have fins, it's kind of wild. A code? Is this a Googleable code or is this a randomized per playthrough code? You know what I didn't know is that that code in in Sparkman scenario in BN4 apparently it, there's like a pool of like four or five potential combinations it can be, and I like how I brute forced it every single time I did it instead of trying to look it up because I thought that it was actually randomized every playthrough. Man, oh man. Like thankfully it tells you if you do if you go through each digit it'll tell you one of these is right. And so like you can assume and just go like sequentially, right? It's tedious but it's not like it's better than actually scouring for the actual code in game. God be in four is a chore. A series of chores. It did occur to me too that this is the fourth game in this series and it kind of shares some similarities with Battle Network 4. Like, the story's pretty weak. The gameplay's pretty good, though. But it's kind of tedious, and, like, pacing is bad. Lots of chore-like arcs. The only thing that this game doesn't have is, like, the, the insane amount of repetition that BN4 does with all the New Game Plus stuff. Being that you basically, like... It's, I don't want to get into it. Just watch my Battle Network videos if you're curious. What the fuck are we doing? Looking for pirates? I'm totally checked out of this game's narrative. Oh, it's gotta be here, yeah. So just head left forever? Left forever. Uh, we can bounce. Oh, the mole guy? Oh, we can't bounce this way, damn it. Well, he was to the left anyway. So we're heading the right direction. We got fly guys. I do kinda wanna level up Luigi because he's very close. Yeah, let's let's do like one battle to get Luigi leveled up. Shoopy doopa dooba doopy doopa dooba deep. Now oh, whatever. Just trying to stomp these guys. Oh, whatever. Oh shit. See, the thing is, like... Stop saying like, goddammit. Uh, the thing is... When a game is paced poorly and you have these, like, chore... Fuck, I said like again. You have these chore... Adjacent... Uh... Arcs? It makes it ends up making the combat feel tedious as well. When you're backtracking through areas and all that kind of stuff. Thankfully running is guaranteed and at no cost to you, so it's not a huge deal. 
but it is something that comes into play, especially with games, with RPGs with, with uh, action commands. It's very easy to make it tedious. Kind of neat how they had Bowser's army take over the island, but I feel like they could have done more... Yeah, I guess that's true. Like, they, they don't really acknowledge it. That's not what I meant to do. Oh, fuck, I pressed B because that's how you do it in Superstar Saga. Instead of L. Whatever. That's annoying. I literally went out of my way for that level up only to get a one drop. Because I pressed the wrong button. It's annoying. Boom ba dum bum 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 ba dum bum ba dum. Oh, I could have just warped over here, whatever. Just Bowser's enemies all over the place. Only like five Intasma enemies compared to, yeah, two Bowser's like 30 and 40, yeah. Intasma's gotta be playing Bowser, right? Like, he's not actually, like, he's not actually letting Bowser do this for no reason. He's got to be manipulating him. And so that all that kind of adds up where it's like Intasma allows for Bowser to have more enemies out there to like make him feel comfortable and make him feel like he's actually in charge. Yeah, we'll see in time. Sliding puzzle, Skyrim. Z key per. Pillow Willow Armadillo. I didn't make it up. Nice. Last piece. Damn it. Somehow that counted as an ambush, that's fun. Boom, boom. And then they just respawn him, okay. That's cheating. Jigger without the shore stuff. Or why I love Superstar Saga so much. I want to make sure I don't get wrecked. Even if some parts seem a little tedious, almost everything you do in that game feels important to the story. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Oops. He's trying his hardest. Shy guys in the back are one of the super boss enemies. Okay. Not sure if that's 100% accurate, but they're strong. I'm guessing they give a lot of EXP, too. I mean, it, if I feel the need to grind it at any point, then... That might be the way to do it, right? Because I have been avoiding a lot of battles, and I'm not even level 20 right now, so... 
I feel like that's probably underleveled, considering all the ranks that you can achieve. And I would bet that the intention is that you are max rank when you fight the final boss, or at least, assuming there's not like a hidden rank, similar to BIS. Uh, just a pillow. Oh, well, we have uh, some question blocks up there. At least get those. Yeah, but I I'm still in pillow skipping mode, though. Uh, how does that work, okay? And plus, I have a bunch of ultra candies and whatnot that I'm stocking up on, so... If I have to use that on a boss fight to get through... It's fine. Cool. But I bet I, I... I don't know, I bet I could brute force the rest of the game, not with not fighting at all, but, you know, gain a few more levels, maybe at least get the next rank up or something to get the last gear slot on both of my guys, and then just kind of rely on gear. And of course, execution on the battles, like... I'm saying like, god damn it. Execution on the battles, as I've said many times before, can hypothetically give you infinite defense. Definitely want to be dealing damage on the final boss. Okay. I guess there's some kind of damage damage check, some <laughs> DPS check, there's some MMO, MMO shit. It's fair, though. Like, you need to break him from charging some attack or something. Yeah! He goes, yes! Use these stat boosters, finally. Nice. Final boss is level 37, damn. Then again, though, see, the good thing about skipping enemies, though, well, okay, it depends on how the, the experience curve, the level curve is handled, but in theory, it's like, okay, I'm skipping these guys that give me 200 XP, EXP or something. Uh, I'm skipping them, but... Instead, I'm going to fight the enemies that, uh, you know, later on I'm going to fight enemies that give me even more because I'm lower leveled, right? So generally, assuming you can make it through, it's hypothetically better to do your grinding as late in the game as possible. Or I guess, or as early as possible, but sometimes it's not, it doesn't always work like that, though. Because sometimes experience gain falls off a fucking cliff if you try to grind too much. Which is fair. To prevent you from being, like, super overleveled. But the, you know, the later in the game you are, the more EXP you're gonna gain. Especially if you are lower level. 
Assuming that's how it works. If it's not just like flat EXP per enemy type. Badersh, like that. Couple of idiots. <laughs> Sit idiots. Couple of idiots plowing, plowing to the bank of my noggin. I lost most of my HP. Had to use a mushroom. Hmm, what they look like? Don't recall much. Then again, don't recall much these days. Hmm. I'm turning into Kermit. Y'all wanna know which way the, them fools went? You know, there's coins to be made here. Dude, there's only one direction they could have gone from this screen. But only if and y'all can win the mole hunt game. Oh, fuck off. This area is not even that big, though. Can I skip this? Or no? I'm assuming it's mandatory. The way they present it makes it sound like you can just go look for them. But I'm assuming it's not actually true. You don't know. Fine, we'll just do it, I guess. very annoying. Oh shit. I, I swear I pressed A, but I think I hallucinated that. What? I thought that it cleared everything. I guess it's only proximity. Holy shit. I'm really shit at this. Not the golden one. The golden banana. Oh yeah, and then also, I was thinking about YouTubers that I watch that I'm not subbed to, which I probably should, but uh, I'm sure you guys have seen Terminal Montages stuff. His animations, they're very funny. That was very bad. That wasn't actually as bad as I thought, but like, I was closer than I thought, but... These guys cross here. And somehow I didn't get both of them. What? Okay, there we go. That's super lit. They cross again. Dude, what? The timing on this is really annoying. Thankfully, it doesn't even matter. Oh wait, we already did it. Oh shit. Oh, they just give you a shit ton of gold ones at this point. That's fun. It's a shame that I already obliterated the record. Oh, it is mandatory? That's annoying. Not too bad, though. It's actually not the worst minigame ever. I, I don't hate it. It's just... When it's forced like that, it's never... Well, not never, but it's rarely fun when they force it on you. Bum ba dum bum ba dum.
Yeah, this game's definitely not in the territory of I would never play this again, but I would maybe hold out in vain for a uh, remaster of some kind that maybe maybe irons out some of the tedium a little bit. Shubba deepa doo, boopa deepa doo. I'm gonna heal up. Uh, where do I heal up? Do I just talk to anyone? I don't know. It's maybe the item shop does it. Maybe they don't do it here. Oh, they don't do that here. Damn. Uh, well, I guess I could check inventory if it's updated at all. Mm, I mean, it has, but nothing with nothing that is worth buying, though. Unport. But a beep boop, but a beep boop. This is the right way, right? I'm assuming we just go straight up to the actual blimps. Or at least towards there. <laughs> They're just like <laughs> birds. My shoulders are same. Stealth mission. Heard what, complete stranger? The latest juicy rumor about Bowser? Bowser. I can like hear his sound effect when you select him in melee too. Like, Bowser. It's like, like whatever. I can't I can't do it because it's like monster sounds, but Bowser's birthmark. We got the sheets, nice. Let me hold them out so they can steal them again. Thieves! The game counts as a boss. I was gonna ask, it seems like it lets you do these in any order, except for the first one, because you need the bounce. But I was gonna ask about, uh... Like, this is fitting because it's the last one I did, but if it's not the last one you did, then... Shit. All right, I need to be faster and not miss. Just a coincidence, but it does, yeah, it does fit. It's kind of cool they let you do them out of order, I guess. At least the puzzling kinds of elements were pretty solid. Like, as far as dungeons, quote-unquote. 
It's pretty good. Definitely not bad. Alright, let's try this again. Let's try to... Let's see if I can actually nail this. I don't... I guess you can do you can do that pretty quick if you're if you're good enough. Let's use a healing charge. I'm about to get a new one anyway. I'm like totally half assing this fight completely. Oh man. Let's try this again. That's pretty sick. I kind of like that one. Oh shit, I thought he always got dizzy, but I guess not. I don't know how I nailed that last one. Uh, it was like a rhythm thing, for sure. Could not pull it off that time, though. Probably would have been better to just jump on him, but whatever. This will this will probably kill. Lit. That's a little EXP jump. See, that indicates to me that I'm not in extremely over leveled. I know that's. Not really much of a boss fight, but... I was, like, stumbling through that one, basically, and it was fine. Yeah, where'd they go? We literally incinerated them. It's pretty brutal when you think about it. Just, like, chucking fireballs at these guys until they just vaporize. Never to be seen again. But this is a Mario game. So we just pretend <laughs> we just pretend like Mario and Luigi slaughtering entire species of animals is not a problem. Not even animals, like they're sentient, they can speak. Don't get between a man and his bed sheets. I guess that's fair. His name is Bedsmith. I thought he was a Bedsmith. A Bedsmith named Bedsmith? I guess that fits in, in the universe where they're called Mario Mario and Luigi Mario. They were sentient and they chose violence. I guess that's true. Self-defense. The Prowser's army, they know what they got into, yeah.
Are there Koopas and Goombas and whatnot that aren't in Bowser's army? Well, I guess in, in Paper Mario we see that. So that was a dumb question. I'd assume the same with most games in the Mario universe. Where's the bedsmith so I don't have to, like, spend longer than I need to looking for this? Wakeport, okay. Damn it. This is that counts as an ambush, because they just die, right? <laughs> like fucking dead. Like fucking obliterated, dude. Right on cue. That's so funny. But that makes sense, because we have the bounce now. Yeah, they literally did not stand a chance. Killing on ambush is really disrespectful, though. I gotta say. Can I bounce? Uh, well, it probably wants to take me to take the, uh... It wants me to go from the left side, probably. I want to see about getting these attack pieces. It's Pobble. Cripes. Took me a while, but I found it. The secret of that... Peloper creep... Pillow... Peloper. Why hide the second floor entrance like that? It was right in front of my nose the whole time, see? Jackpot, heh <laughs> Those drips will know I'm making for the second floor, but they're snoop- I can't do the voice with enthusiasm, so I'm not even gonna bother. Goodbye. Never understand what he's saying. I know there's a place we can bounce up over here. It's weird that you can only do it in four directions, though. I also I appreciate the built-in speed up function in the remake of Superstar Saga. We can hold the R button to like speed through dialogue and cutscenes. It's not super fast, but it's it's definitely something. Pace is gonna pick up from now on. That's good. I'd like to wrap this up and get the bed made and then call it. We can do Somnum Woods next time. It smells like the fuzz. Sorry, Popple. I I like Popple, but I'm 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 like it's let's speed this up. No 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 no. Oh, this boss is really good. We're skipping pillows. <sighs> no interest in doing more. Oh, I'm very low on health. I, I should have slept at the inn because... They give you shit, but it's fine. Wait, do I need to use syrups as well? I do. The 37's fine. Ba -da -be -de -be -de. What? We literally talked to you. It's just a wiggler.
Eh. breaths almost done I am getting I'm kind of annoyed yeah it's weird but also like I guess a lot's happened since superstar saga so I, I suppose it's understandable It's time for the miss, eh? And this trip's gotta go. I'll take the first shot, see? You two mugs watch a master. Ooh. That's pretty rude. Oh, shit. That did a lot. See if I can nail this. Not bad, not bad. Not great, but not bad. Okay, I figured it was he was gonna be heavy. Yeah, it's kinda cool. We'll team up. Use something to heal up Mario. Betrayal. Yeah. Yeah, well, he was on the line of fire. I don't know what to say. Oh, so I guess if they don't bounce, they do more or something? I don't know. Still got 100 damage in on him. Oh, nice. Press it too, uh, too late again. The strat with this one is to just spam to the right, though. And then you just gotta time your shit with Mario, though. Which I'm very much not doing. That was terrible. I have, like, two good ones back-to-back, -back, though. I missed one, and so I didn't get the spam. It's annoying.
Is this a problem if he pulls on the flower? Like, do, I, do I not want him to do that? I mean, I'd like to not target Fawful, but... Oh, it just makes him do that one attack. I'd, yeah, I'd rather... Oh, well, whatever. It's like the staggered... Oh, shit. Okay. It's later than I thought. Nice. <laughs> the big one on Popple. It's not what I wanted, but whatever. Hope he does the chase attack. We shall see. Sorry, Popple. Fuck you, god damn it. It's like as soon as I, I get my timing off, I can't I can't recover. It's annoying. Nice, I actually did it this time. Also, it is cute that he calls us rookies as a reference. Fuck! God damn it. There's the timing. Got it like halfway through. Learning to recover. <laughs> Allergic to the chase attack. Is a chase attack cool? I'm assuming it is. Man, you have to really nail that to get the spam. That's wild. Fuck. That was a pretty decent start, but whatever. You get anything special for not having uh, Popple get hit? I don't really understand that element, aside from him getting in the way. That was pretty lit. Although I don't want to hit Popple, so... I would like for the big one to not hit Popple. This is a waste of damage. His face when he's sad, though, is pretty fun.
fuck? Dog shit, whatever. I think I'm tossing him too fast. That's why. I was doing okay there, but I need to do that a little bit slower. I wonder if it has to do with Popple getting on top of the Wiggler, though, so. Oh, yeah, that's that's got to be the trigger for it. Where's the trigger? Holy Christ. Dude, Popple, what the fuck? I can, I can see why you like that one, though, because you have to, like... You have to jump if Popple gets in your way, like, stomp on him. I guess that's a good point. I think I was trying to do it too fast. Nice. And that's it. If you jump on him, he gets run over, yeah. But you kind of have to do that, because otherwise he gets you run over. Pretty cool, nice max candy. Vanished. <laughs> oh, wait. trade. No honor among thieves, yeah, literally. I better get a big EXP payout for this, though. Don't have the timing down on that, obviously. His little noise when you hit him is pretty fun. Fuck. Redeemed, though. I'm hoping this battle's over before I even figure out and nail down the timing for the soccer balls. Nice.
I'm just now being able to catch the tells. I'm just not reacting fast enough. Or I'm reacting too fast, in fact, but... Nice. 999 HP, which is two thirds of Wiggler's. Wow. That is pretty tanky. I'm surprised that Wiggler had, like. How much HP did Wiggler have? Like. Math, math, math. Like 1200, 1300 or something? Oh, whoops. I looked away. What's up, SB Gaming? It's going alright. Well, we just we just did like most of that damage back to him, thankfully. Fourteen eighty-five, okay. Nice. That the badge meter charges up really slow, man. Yeah, Year of Luigi was actually insane. I need to stop looking away. This game is pretty fun, though. It's kind of long, but, you know. Uh, I don't want to do this. Didn't even know he could do that, like steal the hammer, yeah. It's kind of fun. I mean, it's a, it's a nice callback to uh, Superstar Saga. Take the mush. Damn it, a little bit too late. Nice double lucky. Fuck. That was kind of BS, but whatever. So good for tomorrow. Uh, I should be. I should actually be this time, though. You can tug of war your hammer back in Superstar Saga Remake. Oh, that's kind of... that's nice, yeah. It might keep chipping away at the remake... slowly. That's one of those games that I can very much just play... secondarily and not have to pay too much attention. Lit. Big EXP. Oh, yeah, but not enough for a level up? Wow, okay. Unford. Now we can wrap this up, like, actually, though. You're telling me. We fought over a stupid fucking flower?
It's kind of wholesome, weirdly. Goodbye, Pomple. Yeah. No more combat, please. This opens a bridge or something. Oh, just a shortcut. That's like... what? That's like the lamest shortcut in, in existence. Nice. Uh, skipping the pillow. I'm very tired, if you couldn't tell. I'm ready to be done. Can I bounce up here? No. Well, there's an attack piece, so there's got to be some way up there. We can deal with that later, I suppose. Is this our guy? Like, actually? Sweep. Base numb. Dude, dude straight up says I love you. <laughs> oh man. Hey, calm down calm down there, fella. Little guy. This is a this is a PG it's a PG stream. I, I told him to calm down and he wouldn't. What's it called breaking bed? It sounds too much- it sounds too sexual, though, and that's the thing. That's not what I'm going for. And plus we're, like, assembling it, but yeah, something to do with that. Could have worked. Oh, lots of question blocks down here. Good shit. Have I used a single refreshing herb this playthrough? I don't know. <laughs> Not impressed. Should be a stopping point after this cutscene, cool. That's it. That's it! What's up, Iggy? I've come up with a new recipe. Why is that the first thing that came to mind? Why is it Final Fantasy XV, of all things? Let's do this ship. Yeah. 
Oh, we're still... I mean, I'm gonna stop here, but it's like we're still not done assembling the bed, though. Because we have to rescue what's-his-nuts. Alright, next time we'll actually catch the Zookeeper. And probably do some of Somnum Woods. But I'm exhausted, so I'm gonna call it. This game's too long, but it's all good.